Hi guys, it is another blissfully rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is uh, a Monday night. It is September 12th, 2022. So uh, this, might, this might be my last chronicle of the collapse for several days because we're getting ready for the big doomer shindig here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Uh, anybody who wants to, there's still plenty of time. We're cranking up Wednesday. We're going to go Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. So there's still plenty of time. Uh, send me an email at collapsechronicles at gmail.com if you want to come join us while we enjoy it, while we still can. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make this video and publish it on Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. So, I touched on this uh, in a rant. There's been a lot on the mainstream media. I want to thank uh, Brother Aaron for sending me probably the best... Uh, overall chronicle of the collapse on this issue from Science Alert. Science Alert from Tessa Kalmaduras. Alright. Scientists studying Earth's trees issue a stark warning to humanity. We have another stark warning to humanity, not coming from the United Nations, just coming from anybody paying attention to what is going on with the trees. Uh, good Lord, we have a, and right behind my brand new, better tiny house, the beech trees, uh, the little beech grove, it's, it's, it's gone. Uh, the ash trees, uh, the whatever ash trees were still hanging on, they died this year. No more ash trees at Bugs in a Jar Farm in a couple more years. No more beech trees. Uh, the white pine fungus is about th uh, four or five miles from here. The hemlock. Uh, fungus. You know, you might as well go ahead and build your tiny house out of hemlock before they're all dead. Do you understand that the ash, let's say, well, the chestnuts, obviously, the elms and the chestnuts are gone, the ash trees are gone, the beech trees are on their way out, the white pines are getting ready to be gone, the hemlocks right behind and and uh, and now I'm hearing something about the damn maple trees. I mean, what's left? What's left? After all those go, good God! If the maple trees go, uh, you know, bugs in a jar. Sorry. Anyway, take it away. Science alerts with your Stark message for humanity. <clears throat> From soaring coastal redwoods to dinosaur era wallen pines and firs that make the perfect Christmas trees. Even our most revered woody plants are in an awful lot of trouble. But it turns out that losing some species will not just endanger local forests, it will threaten entire ecosystems, says a new study. Last year, a global assessment titled State of the World's Trees found a shocking one-third of all tree species are currently teetering on the edge of existence. One-third of the tree species on this planet getting ready to say we're heading to a new planet. 
This amounts to about 17,500 unique tree species that are endangered. That is more than double the number of all threatened mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians combined. You take every single mammal, bird, reptile, and amphibian on this planet, combine them, and does not add up to the number of trees that are uh, getting ready to hit the ground. Some trees are so rare that only a single known individual remains, like the lonesome pine in Mauritius. In a new paper, this in a new paper, the same team of researchers behind the state of the world's trees re report issues a quote warning to humanity hmm, close quote about the consequences of these losses, backed by 45 other scientists from 20 different countries. You know, I want to dedicate this. Uh, I'm going to dedicate this rant to Gail Zawacki, the late great friend of mine. Gail Zawacki, you know, this was her big cause. Uh, she, you know, for the last good lord, 20 years of her life, Gail was talking about this. Where were we? Conservation biologist. Malene Rivers from Botanic Gardens Conservation International and, and colleagues outline the many impacts these losses will have on our economies, livelihoods, and food. Most of our fruit comes from trees, as do many nuts and medicines with non-timber products amounting to about 88 billion dollars worth of trade, you know, not counting logs and like, uh, good lord, how many thousands of dollars have I spent on dead trees this year? I have been killing hemlocks, you know, uh, good lord, how many hemlocks have I been, uh, I don't have any hemlocks on my property. But I sure as hell have been killing hemlocks. But, you know, I try to rationalize it because it's not going to be that long before this hemlock blight makes it to New York. They're all going to die anyway. You know, I might as well make a damn tiny house out of them. They're all going to be dead anyway. You know, all of me, you know, so I'm going. So the next tiny house, we're building a hemlock tiny house in my white pine grove. All of the white pines are going to be dead. All of the hemlocks are going to be dead. You know, what difference does it make? I'm just hoping that I'm going to be dead before my white pines are dead because it's really going to suck. It's really going to suck to uh, sit here and watch helplessly as, you know, I, I build a, ti a hemlock tiny house in the middle of a white pine grove and then I get the karma coming back on me and watch all of my white pines die, at which point I might as well cut them down and make a bunch of tiny houses out of them while I still can. Anyway, I'm getting off track. Where was I? All right. All right. In the developing world, in the developing world, which I guess means this county that I live in, 880 million people rely on firewood for fuel, and 1.6 billion people live within three miles of a forest relying on them for food and income. Uh, I'm about 50 feet from a forest, uh, relying on it um, for my income. My zoning here, uh, it bugs in a jar, the uh, zoning 
is called Forest Recreational. The reason I have such cheap taxes is because my zoning is Forest Recreational, and I uh, can't think of a better way to recreate in a forest than hanging out in my tiny houses. Okay, all told, trees contribute about $1.3 trillion annually to the global economy, yet we are destroying billions of trees every year, clearing massive tracts of land for farming and tiny home developments. Yes, trees are each their own little worlds, teeming with all sorts of single and multicellular life forms, including other plants, fungi, uh, fungi, yeah, right, uh, I will go with, uh, I will say uh, that, the fung that the fungus is doing quite well on the hemlock trees. That's what bleach was created for. Uh, including other plants, fungi, bacteria, and animals. Lose a tree. Lose a tree and the entire world dies too. I figure I am responsible for the death of Right now, I'm probably, this year, I have prob probably, ah, oh shit, I forgot about my place in Florida. I have probably personally murdered 500 trees this year, and right before I leave, the last thing I plan to do is get out my chainsaw and go absolutely berserk in the back 40. So I will probably be resp personally responsible for the death of close to 1,000 trees. I've probably killed more trees in 2022 than any year of my life. Damn trees, they're blocking out the sky. Lose a tree and the entire world dies too. They often form the, su the supportive base for the whole web of life around them. In fact, half of all the world's animals and plants rely on treed habitats. This is, I forgot this woman's first name already, Ms. Rivers, quote, Habitat loss is frequently tree loss. It is at the root of that when we look at extinction concerns for animals or birds. There is no way, there is no way we can take care of all the other creatures if we do not take care of the trees. Close quote. As with all living systems, losing diversity makes the whole jumble of living connections more vulnerable. Is this camera still on? I can't tell. This is because less variation means less diversity in immune response, in genes and responses to environmental conditions meaning lower chances of surviving the many threats battering the complex web of interactions that is life on Earth. Some tree species provide unique interactions and cannot be replaced by other tree species. This includes the distinctive dragon's blood tree left over from the ancient Oligocene woodlands, which are host to many other species that are entirely dependent on them, including many other plants and the gecko that pollinates it. So, 
the extinction of one single species of tree can cause a massive domino effect across everything else that interacts with it, even if they're already rare. Species that rely on our dwindling forest have already declined by around 53% since 1970, and more forests around the world are showing signs of increasing stress. This does not just impact the other life trees interact with either. Trees are interwoven with earth, soil, atmosphere, and weather, cleaning our air, producing oxygen, and making it rain. They store three quarters. <clears throat> well, where were we? Oops. Uh, la, 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 la. Anyway, my computer has. Anyway. They store three quarters of the world's accessible fresh water and more than half of its problematic carbon dioxide. Lose enough trees in our planet's cycling of carbon, water, and nutrients will be thrown into disarray, quoting this Rivers person, quote, We are showing that diverse forests share more, store more carbon than monocultures. Do you think so? <clears throat> Continuing quoting Ms. Rivers, quote, That is true for many ecological functions, not just carbon capture, but providing habitat to animals, soil stabilization, resilience to pests and diseases, resilience to storms and adverse weather. By losing tree diversity, we will also lose diversity in all organisms, birds, animals, fungi, microorganisms, and insects." Close quote. A few tree species are getting lucky. Yes. We're getting lucky and able to take advantage of the rapid environmental changes we have caused, like those creeping into territory that fires have cleared, but many more species are being obliterated by the same processes. Much needs to be done to combat this at a collective level, but we all can play a part by recognizing the importance of trees and fighting our own plant blindness. Yes, fighting our own plant blindness. Earlier this year, researchers pointed out that fewer people than ever are taking up botanical education in the UK at a time when we need plants more than ever. In the lead up to the UN's COP15 Biodiversity Conference this December, Rivers and colleagues urge leaders to integrate trees into climate policies better and provide greater protection for them. We must all think of the trees. We must all think of the trees. I'm thinking of those damn trees. You know, and so what's going on at, at Bugs in a Jar is so I have this stand of these beautiful big white pines where I'm building this tiny house. Now these white pines were planted. They are not natural. They were planted, they're probably, I'm guessing, 40 or 50 years old. So there are these beautiful trees which were planted here. And now what's going on is the maples, which belong here probably more than the white pines, are trying to uh, grow in this dense 
pine forest, but you know, we've already got a closed canopy of these beautiful big pine trees. So these pathetic little maple trees, you know, they're about anywhere from two to four inches in diameter. So they, these the spindly, pathetic little maple trees, they get about 20 feet up in the air, you know, and they just they start doing all of this shit. So, uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out, you know, 200 maple trees in the middle of my pine grove. And probably when I'm finished doing that, then the white pines, you know, the whatever that white pine disease that's right down the street will probably hit right about the time I kill all the maple trees. But anyway... If you want to see those little maple trees before I kill them, uh, come see us at the shindig at Bugs in a Jar Farm. And Groot, if you are listening to this, bring your chainsaw, brother. Good God. The first person at the party is bringing his chainsaw. We're going to start off the festivities with a chainsaw. There are bugs in a jar farm. We're going to take out this tree right behind us here. So, yeah, you can't see this tree probably. Nope, can't see it. This apple tree. Yep, got to go. It's all split. This Virginia creeper is covering it up. But this poor apple tree... Getting ready to hit the ground tomorrow. That apple tree behind it is already dead. Good God, how many of these apple trees have I taken out this year? I've already, I've taken out three apple trees this year. The biggest apple tree on the property as Sandy remembers, it came down uh, in, in that damn hurricane last year we lost that apple tree but uh look at these dahlias <laughs> good god this dahlia was so heavy that the entire plant broke this thing th that one dahlia probably weighs half a pound uh, but it seems to be doing fine in the water. Look at that. Look at that girl there. Good God. Anyway. Those damn trees. It's hard to grow flowers with all those damn trees in the way. Get out there and enjoy your trees and your flowers while you still can. I am off guys I'm taking a few days off I will catch you down the line bye guys